Greetings ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Compendium of Mad Science. Today we're going to look at a piece of kit that I got free from the local ham fest last year. This is a Rakal Dana 5002 wideband level meter. I'll have a look at the manual as well because I've got that, and it's original vintage from 1982. I am your resident mad scientist, Callum P. Robertson, and this is Technical Tuesday. Let's begin. So this is the Rakal Dana 5002 wideband level meter. To judge by the ME545 slash G, this is in fact the military version of that of this particular unit. I'm not sure what the differences between this and the civilian model are, but I do have the manual for this and it's certainly an interesting read. We'll have a look at that at the end. One of the features I wish a lot of more modern equipment had is pull-out operating features, operating information. For instance, how to change the cal factor, how to uh, compute functions, number entry, measurement, and whatnot. There's two of these in here. The other one is uh, special functions, including the GPIB interface. There's one bit that rather amuses me in this one, and that is down here. A lot of meters and bits of equipment, when you get an overload, they say overload, OVD. It's really boring. This bit of equipment, though, this equipment says, ouch. The voltage is over 500 volts. I mean, that is, a, that is an ouch scenario, so I suppose it is accurate. So this is the note that came with it. It says the main filter cap self-destructed may still work something but mostly okay I've no, I've no idea what the rest of that says since the main filter cap has apparently self-destructed I am not going to attempt to turn this on until I've taken it apart This unit was actually dropped the day I got it. Not by me, the guy told me. For the reasons I didn't pay much money for it. In fact, I paid £10 for the signal generator and the Fluke 6160A and this Rack Aldana. They're both free after that. So, does this just slide back? Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. There's not much in there at all. Right, so you know, let's lift the skirt on this one. Oh, look at all this RF goodness. Mm -mm. Right, so this is board A2 according to the manual. At the back here we have a 20 pin connector, another 20 pin connector coming in from the side here. Hmm, let's see what we've got. Lots of trimmer caps here. I don't want to touch them if you can help it. I believe these are all military grade capacitors. They've got a solid uh, plastic coating. I believe that's, I'm not sure what the plastic is, but it's uh, solid. I'll give you a side shot of them in a little moment. Mm. So we've got a wee SMC connector coming into the back here. Over here we've got a CA316E RCA H832. Uh, this is the detector PCB assembly. So this is obviously the waveform detector, which is why it's all shielded. On the side it's written P11-1543 revision A. Uh, well, there's a wee motor roll apart, that's a TLO84 CDS, 084 CDS, KKGF8845. So that looks like a 45th week 88, which would make it uh, quite a recent board actually. Again, that's the same date here, that's the fact that's the same chip, 84 CDS. What other chips we've got down here? These three are those CA3146Es. Yep, here we have a PSSA SP9680. That's the 19th week 88, so this is definitely an 88 board. Up here we have a TL08CP727 by Texas Instruments. I assume that white indicates it's the military version. Again, I couldn't really say. In here we have a Motorola 7905. I believe that's a 7905, 7905. I should know that. In the front here we have an LM340T5. So these two chips are both S uh, PSSA SP9680s. And there was that uh, 
text and instruments power again. I assume it may be a I assume it may be a military part, sorry, military grade part, but I'm not sure. And this is with these big plastic pastors I was talking about, the plastic case on them. It's a moulded case, it's not of fact all the all of them are like this. That's a moulded case. It doesn't look dipped. I'm not sure if that's a standard for the time or if it's just the again it's a military grade part. Open that at the back there, we've got a, a PTC. Lost capacitor, C1. I'm not seeing the self-destructed capacitor they were talking about. I wonder if they've already replaced it. So this is the GPIB header, that's a 36 pin connector. Uh, these are 36 pins as well. And that goes to a board at the back here which contains the dip switches for the GPIB and the GPIB header itself. Right, so let's try and pop this board out. There we go. So one of the interesting things about this board that you've probably noticed is that they've actually cable tied off their ICs. MC3447Ps. I believe these are microprocessors. I'll double check that in post. And that one there is an MC6488P. Uh, P98804. Again, that's, again, that dates it to 88. We've got a couple of these SN74L s 24 n Up here we have CD4066 AEs. We have a couple of SP8842As. An S bracket P8636A. Again, we've got a couple more of these 74, 7400 series logic chips dotted about the board. So I assume this is mainly signal processing. And in here we have an LM340T-5. Assume that's the volt, a 5 volt re voltage regulator. Judging by the cap going across it. Right, so this is the main processor assembly. Uh, down here we've got a series of dip switches. I'm not sure what those are for. You've got MC6802P. I assume that's the main processor. And over here we have an MC6821. I've got two of those. I'm trying to figure out about this blowing main filter cap is. I wonder if they meant mains filter, which would be that part there. It's definitely a burnt out smell in here. It's uh, Something's definitely self-destructed as the um, manual suggested. Here we've got the other side of the uh, comparator unit that was mentioned earlier. So what they're doing is they're just using this a bit of uh, they're just using it as a general shield. There is the back end of the SMC connector. That goes straight to the input. It's a nice little joint there. As I said, everything here is engineered up to the hill. It's uh, really quite nicely made. So again, I thought this was a bodge wire at first. If you look here, they've actually got a hole drilled in the board, and it's cable tied down. Looks like there's a couple of solid state relays, at least I think that's what they are. G57E X317s. Uh, over here, again, I'm pretty sure these are relays. These are 971C 12 30. I'd assume those are 12 volt 30 amp relays. In there is a little, that's a little variable capacitor, a little trimmer capacitor. Another trimmer cap over here. Moving down the board, we've got a couple of GE. H11F1s. Uh, over here looks like we've got a CD4053BEX. Sorry, I'm reading this upside down. Again, it looks like a. This looks like it's mainly doing with switching. There's a lot of relays on the board. And then we end with the uh, flat flex that goes over to the opposite side. So in there, it looks like they've heat shrunk a resistor to a capacitor. Are they heat matching them? My far the most interesting part of this piece of kit is the documentation that comes with it. This is the original documentation that I received with this. So as you can see, this manual is produced by the Department of the Army, suggesting that this was contracted to the US Army. Inside, it's a very well put together manual. You'll find lots of material, cautions, instructions, how to use the manual, so I believe this was intended for military personnel, so as a result it's very in-depth. Full, uh, full details of the all the functions. And then you've got the appendices at the back, so you've got 
list of pretty much everything. Part lists, troubleshooting, calibration procedures. What is that? Signature analysis test. <laughs> I've no idea what that is, but I have never seen a GPIB controller that looks like that before. <laughs> Maybe that's just what it looks ba like back in the day. Mine's is a USB. <laughs> Again, plenty of stuff. So this is the... Uh, so again, this is part of the calibration accuracy test. Uh, the gives you very small uh, ranges, test probes. Uh, so there you go, there's a problem's test checklist, so you'd go through this, check testing all the various ranges. Lots of good stuff in here. This is prime bedtime reading. So apparently there's a wee battery in the board there. I'll need to have a look at that actually. Next time I'm inside the board. Because I'm not convinced that battery will still be in good shape after all these years. That's nearly 30 years it'll be now. In fact that is 30 years. It's a 30 year old piece of kit. 2018 this was. Have a look at this one. Oh and here we get to the appendices. The appendices full of lots of interesting stuff. You've got the calibration list of all the parts. Component lists, that was an allocation table I was looking at a moment ago. Again, lots of calibration procedures, big index, and this is by far the most interesting part of the entire manual. All these ten foldouts, oh, oh, I love them. So, this one's the, this is the assembly and cable locator. So it's got functional block diagrams that shows you the layout of the inside of the unit. Uh, you've got the input coming in going through a couple of... So in principle I'd be able to maintain this for a very long time. For the simple reason that I've got the documentation to maintain it. Alright, so coming in from the outside you've got a fuse line going through your transformer. Got two diode bridges and an AC an AC bridge. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm not sure if that's a, but that might be a sense wire. It's going to the rear terminal at any rate. Got a big bunch of filter caps all in parallel. Uh, up down here we've got a Schmidt trigger. Over here another bunch of resistors, a couple of resistor networks. Those are in little sill packages if you can bother looking back to the video. Bunch of selectors. Again, plenty of good stuff in here. Lots of bedtime reading. The best kind of bedtime reading. <laughs> so this is the process of circuit card assembly. Sheet four four. So that's the that's the remainder of the board. Looks like a big data bus. We've got. Uh, what did I? I can't remember if I indicated those or not. On the main board there were four ICs with stickers on them. Those were E squared PROMs or EP ROMs as are noted here. Looks like it's a 4096 series of some sort. So we've got four E PROMs, two RAM chips, and that ties into the main processor. Which is a 6802 as we mentioned earlier. So this is the top board the of the detector circuit card assembly. Getting the waveforms up here on the buses. This I believe is the opposite side of the board. Is it still the detector circuit card assembly? Detector circuit card assembly. So this is the amplifier circuit card. Um, this might be the opposite side of it, I'm not entirely sure. So we've got a rising and a falling square wave coming in. 
the rise and fall trigger rather. I'll go through that, that optocoupler we saw earlier. Which, uh, so this is the opposite side of the board. A bunch of designators, and you've got your uh, AC relay FET conditions. So you've got so you've got binary one equals on. Based on various ranges, got the range details there in fact. So it looks like the opposite side of that board was indeed mainly based around switching. Open this is a PCB we didn't look at in the main teardown. This is the front panel. Looks like we've got a series of yeah, probably line controllers there. Probably horizontal and these look at probably some sort of shift register or mux for the controllers. Three big LCD drivers. So this is the GPIB circuit card assembly. That's the board in the very centre that we looked at. Again, those are those AND gates I showed you. There's quite a lot of 7400 series logic on that board, so this is where it's all coming from. So it's all to do with uh, controlling the GPIB interface. And that about does it. Although there is one last thing I want to show you, because this is a military document, there's some very interesting addendum to it. Right, so this is the feedback page. Something wrong with this publication? Then jot down the dope about it on this form. Carefully tear it out, fold it and drop it in the mail. That's right folks, in the military, dope is a technical term. So as you see, that, sorry, as per the sample here, it's just to do with uh, sending in recommendations for modifying this manual in future, future editions. Hey, yes, if your outfit wants to know about your recommendation, make a carbon copy and give it to your headquarters. <laughs> ah, dear. So this is actually supposed to be getting sent to Fort Monmouth, U.S. Army Communication Electronics Command in New Jersey. <laughs> right, folks, so that about covers it for the ME545 or the Rakaldana 5002 level meter. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, why not leave a like and a comment if you want to talk about it. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. I am your resident mad scientist, Callum P. Robertson. Good night, folks.